Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Laura Bain. Go! Like elite para-athletes everywhere, Ben Brown, one of Canada's top wheelchair racers, is coping with the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Ben's been competing as a para-track athlete for 11 years and seven years at the world level. He's joining me from his home in Cambridge, Nova Scotia to talk about how he's navigating the challenges and opportunities of another year of training. Ben, thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome, Laura. Thanks for having me. How did you feel when you first heard that the 2020 games were postponed? Well, to be honest, it was a bit of relief because like, um, it just seemed like events or qualifying events kept getting canceled, like left right and center and I had to come home early from warm weather training so while I was in isolation finding out the games was cancelled it was no long it was just more relief versus stressor and then I could just focus on what I needed to do you know and move forward towards my training for the year. And how did those restrictions that we were all put under in the spring affect your training? Well I couldn't access a track until June but because um, with wheelchair racing we have rollers it's our version of a treadmill, so it's got a big drum on the back that uh, spins. And to get it moving, you have to push your rear wheels and you lock your front wheel down so your chair doesn't move. And the only thing that's moving is your rear wheels and allows you to do the very similar work that you do it on the road or do on the track. You just mimic that kind of thing. I had a home gym set up, so during my isolation, um, I had dumbbells, resistance bands, what have you, and I probably spent over $500, mind you, some of it was trial and error on a home gym setup and at the end I had a chin up bar, T-Rex bands, a barbell my coach gave me with weights that were literally rusted right on, like I say, dumbbells, everything and I just did the workouts. I never saw this as a, I mean I did get some downtime but I made sure that, you know, just in case anything miraculously happened, I was still in the best shape possible and I kept training right through it um, and because of that, I'm probably in much better fitness than I was like a year ago. What's your training routine like now? Um, right now I'm on the road just about every day and then I'm on the track two to three times a week. My training never really changed as far as amount goes. I'm still going six days a week, pretty much twice a day sometimes, three times a day. Training hasn't really changed much other than my volume. Race season would have been over by a week or so ago. Normally my mileage would have been 120, max 160 kilometers. My average week right now is 180 to 185 twice during the pandemic when I'm out strictly outdoors I've gone over 200 kilometers including last week so it's we've just been focusing a lot on overall fitness power endurance speed endurance with a little bit of acceleration and top speed awesome um, I mean I remember seeing you Ben like one of the first stories that I did four years ago with AMI was at the track there and I remember watching you were just like way out ahead of everybody else and you had this reputation as being like the fastest certainly, you know, in Atlantic Canada. What do you think the secret is to your success and why you're so fast as a racer? Uh, my secret to my success, honestly, is I just refuse to be outworked. And I'm, a vo as my coach, Julie Albert has stated, I'm just a volume responder. We've done the, um, the stereotypical uh, taper that a lot of athletes in track would do and it doesn't tend to work out. It'll work out at first, and then I just lose all my speed. Um, it's just I put it on. I train a lot, and I train even when I was focused on sprinting. I did more mileage than what most sprinters do. And now that I'm focused more on the four and the eight, we're putting in a lot of mileage. It's just constant repetition, um, and I think it's just I'm really motivated to be the best in the world at some point. Uh, I just love to go fast, and again, I. I think I can quote uh, Randall Cobb, who was a wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. I saw this on a YouTube video. You may be bigger, faster and stronger than me, but you'll never outwork me. And that's just kind of how I that's my mindset is eventually that work that I put in, it's going to pay off. And 95 percent of the time it does. Absolutely. Um, and I know that you've also started a T-shirt company. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so my brand is Get After It Sports because my motto in life is get after it and I just decided to add the sports just to be on the safe side for copyright reasons um, 
I started the t-shirt line in right before the pandemic started and I'm working on another business that I plan on coming out with in the next, um, I'd say three months, max six. That's more towards parts. We'll see how that goes. It's just something to help, you know, cover the training and living costs a little bit because, um, you know, being an athlete in Canada, we're funded, but it's not always the greatest funding. It's better than most countries, but again, it's just, when you're training six days a week, twice a day, it doesn't really leave you many options to work for somebody else. Right. So Ben, how confident are you that the games are gonna happen in 2021? I'd say it's between a 65 to a 80% chance. My goals for next year is to be top eight in the world and hopefully make a final at Tokyo while representing uh, Canada and build towards the next Paralympics in 2024, towards in Paris where I'm hopefully not just in a final, but being a threat for a medal. Awesome. Well, Ben, thank you so much for joining me and best of luck with all your training over the next year. Thank you, Laura.